Hey guys, welcome back to video number five in this series. So today what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and take a look at adding some lights to our home assistant. So remember we did add um, the sensors last time using ESP Home. We're still going to use ESP Home, but today we're going to go ahead and add in an LED strip. And if we do have time, I may take a look at adding some My Lights in there as well. So without anything else, let's go ahead and take a look. There we go guys. So as you can see, everything is exactly where we left it off last time. Um, if we go in here, you can see everything still is exactly the same. So we still do have our humidity and kitchen temperature listed in there as well as those two door sensors. So the PIR and the door sensor is listed in there. So what we'll do today is we're going to go ahead and add in some RGB strips. Um, we're still going to use ESP Home for this. And yes, I have not renamed the Kitchen Multi yet. So I'll still go ahead and rename that sensor. I know I made a spelling mistake in there, but that's fine. So with the LED strips, there's a few things that you need to take notes of. So you get two types. Um, you get your analog. RBG strips and then you also get your digital strips. Now the digital strips, what makes it different is it only comes with three wires where your analog strips will have a color for each LED that you have listed. So the amount that you pay more to get the digital strip is worth it because you can individually address each LED on the strip that you're using instead of just using uh, basic colors and just mixing the colors of all the LEDs at once, we can go ahead and address each individual LED on the specific strip. So that's why I would highly recommend using the digital strips instead of using the analog strips. Now to go ahead and add a new board in here, um, we have a different ESP that's already connected to the Raspberry Pi via USB. So we'll be able to go ahead and upload that code remotely. So the first thing we take a look at is to add it and we need the type of strip that we're using. So usually you'll get your um, 2812B and your 2811B. Now the only difference between those two is the voltage that they're using. So the 12B would use a five volt uh, power to power the specific strip. And then you have your 11B that'll use your 12 volt rail so you can power it by 12 volt instead of the 5 volt. It's basically the main difference for those two types of strips. The one that we're we'll using today is going to be the 2812B. Uh, so if we go back to our ESP home to find it all we need to do is we can search for that specific strip in here and click on go. That'll give us just a single result in here, um, which is the fast LED library. So we can just go ahead and click on there. And then you'll see it gives you an example code right here. Now, what we could do is we could just go ahead and copy this and paste it in to our configuration, upload it, and we should be good to go. But we're going to take a look at also adding in some effects on here as well. So. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and view this information so we can copy this if we want to. And then if we go down, you'll also see all these supported chipsets. So it'll give you all of those strips. As you can see, that's quite a few of them listed on here. So if you do have any of these strips that does um, any of these strips listed on here, you can make use of the exact same library with the fast light, fast LED light. So I already have a code that I've set up previously. So we can go ahead and use that. We'll edit it as well. So the only difference with mine is um, I'm going to go ahead and add in some effects with the strip. So if we scroll down a bit, we'll see we have all the additional other things that we can add in here as well. And one of them is going to be the effects. Now you can click on light effects here and that will open up a different page, which will show you all the effects and you can really customize that effect specifically and create your own effects on there. But what we'll do is we'll just use the standard effects that they already have built in and then we can have that added to our home assistant. So let's quickly go ahead and add that to our home assistant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on the plus sign right here we need to go ahead and name that node. I'm just going to call it TV. 
TV LED. Continue. And I'm still using a different node MC, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on continue. Then we enter in our Wi Fi information. Access password, I'm going to go ahead and leave blank. I need to make this. Yes, there we go. Access password, we can go ahead and leave blank. So we just hit continue. I'm not going to save that. And then hit submit right there. There we go. So we have added the TV LED. So first we can go ahead and we should. I don't see my ESP right here because I plugged it in after um, afterwards. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to go ahead and restart that add on real quick. So to do that, we can just go ahead and click on has IO. And then in the ESP home, we can just go ahead and hit restart right there and wait for that to restart real quick. And once that has restarted, we should be able to go back to ESP home right here. And you'll see it is listed in here. And we can click on right here and you'll see it gives us that USB device. So go ahead and click on it. And then right here, we can just go ahead and hit the upload option. And that'll go ahead and compile and upload that code to our ESP directly. So let's just wait for that to finish. And then we can go ahead and edit that code. There we go. So that went ahead and uploaded. So we can just go ahead and close this out. And then we're going to edit the LED. Remember, we just uploaded the code. So now we can remotely edit that. So you can go ahead and place your ESP where you're going to have it or mount it full time. So if we click on edit, as you can see, everything is blank in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy my existing code in here. I'll leave this down in the description as well for you to go ahead and copy and paste if you need it or need to have it in there. So what it basically is, is we need to specify what item we're going to add, which is the light, the platform, which is going to be that fast LED. So we leave that as is, then the chipset. So that's going to depend on the specific strip that you're using. Remember on the website right here, if we go down or if we go back to that page, you need to specify the specific strip that you're going, that you're using or that you have. And once you have your strip in there, you add it in here in the chipset. Then the pin, which is the pin that your digital strip is going to be connected to. So it's just going to use one pin or two with the ground, but just going to use one pin. And I specified mine, uh, mine as D5. Number of LEDs. So remember it's programming according to the the effects will run according to the amount of LEDs that you have specified. So on mine, I have 45 LEDs. You can go ahead and individually count the LEDs if you really need to, or you can just go ahead and type in the amount of LEDs if you have one that you bought uh, that specifies the amount of LEDs that you have. So I have that in there. RGB color order, which is just the order of the color. You'll, you'll see exactly what this is as soon as we've turned it on. So say, for example, the colors is mixed up or you have different types of colors. If you click on red and it turns on the green, you need to go ahead and swap around red and green. And you'll see me do that because I know this may not be correct. Then the name. So right here is just the name of the specific item. I'm just going to call this TV LED. There we go. And then the last item I added that looks a bit different than that code was just the standard effects. So in here in the effects, and then we added in those effects. And that's it. So now we can go ahead and upload the code to the Arduino. Oh, sorry, not the Arduino, to the ESP. And we can go ahead and plug all that in. in. There we go. So we'll just wait for that to finish and then we can take a look. There we go, guys. So that went ahead and uploaded. As you can see, I unplugged the ESP that we'll be using. I uh, remember we specified that to pin five on our ESP. And then right here, we have the LED strip that I'm going to use. And as you can see, it has only three. Let me just remove this. It only has three wires coming out here. Now, the colors may be a bit confusing, but you do have markings on the strip itself as well. 
So as you can see right there, it gives you the ground with the white cable. The data is going to be the green cable and then the 5 volt is the red cable. So in order to connect this, you can go ahead and cut this off and just connect it. Um, now, because this uses 5 volts, you could use the VIN pin on here, but I would highly not, I would highly recommend not doing that. Um, I would recommend using a external power supply. So right here, I just have a normal USB cable and I just cut off the ends and I created two pins right here that I'll be able to go ahead and plug in to the strip instead of using the power directly from the ESP. So in order to plug that in, what we'll need to do is we'll need to go ahead and plug in that green cable to our ESP on pin number D5. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and use is this male to female DuPont connector. I have just for temporary use, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in it to the middle pin, which is going to be the data pin right there. And then the female part, I will go straight into the ESP on pin number D5. Sorry, it's really hard looking at it this way. And I think that is D5, there we go. So we have D5 plugged in. Now one more thing that we need to do is with our power that's coming from our power supply, we also need to plug in the ground wire to our ESP. So we need to go ahead and plug in the ground wire to ground right here, which remember it's listed as the white one. And then we also need to go ahead and plug in the power cable to the power of that LED strip. And that's from our USB, uh, USB that we created. So we have all that plugged in, but we still need to connect the ground of our power supply. So this is our power supply. We also need to connect this to the ground of the ESP itself. Now I'm quickly gonna go ahead and add on a connection onto the white wire right here and add a DuPont connector and just connect that to ground as well. There we go. So I just quickly went ahead and hooked that up. So as you can see right here, we have the ground wire. Now I know guys, just don't get confused with your coloring on your wires. I know this is a red cable, but this is the ground cable. As you can see, it is connected to the white cable which is going straight to ground. So now what we're gonna do with this one is we're also gonna go ahead and connect this to the ground of the ESP. So if we look for a ground pin, it's going to be the second one right here. There we go. And that should be it. Um, we may need to go ahead and cut off this wire as well because we don't want it to short anywhere. So we can just go ahead and cut that off, but we should be good to go. So all we need to do is we need to go ahead and plug in the power cable that we made and then power up the ESP and then take a look. There we go guys, so we're back in Home Assistant. Uh, remember we uploaded that code to the uh, TV LED. As you can see it is listed as online. So now the one thing we still need to do is we still need to go ahead and add it to Home Assistant. So in order to do that, again, same process, uh, we click on the configuration, then integrations. And then as you can see, it already picked that up. So we can just go ahead and click on configure right here. And it's asking us, do we want to add it? We can just click on submit. And then once we have submitted that, it'll say success. We have successfully added the LED to Home Assistant. So if we go back to overview, because we enabled the editing, it's not going to automatically add it in here, but we can just go ahead and click on the uh, three little dots right here, click on configure UI. And then on the plus sign, just behind the camera, you can just go ahead and click on there. And then all we need to do is we click on entities and then we can go ahead and select that entity right there and hit save. 
there we go so we have that so we should be able to go ahead and turn it on there we go and as you can see it looks like one of my leds may be broken because we have a blue light on there uh it's okay um so but as you can see we can go ahead and turn it on and off um if we click on led tv itself it brings up this little um thing right here and we should be able to go ahead and hit red and as you can see right there i wanted to make it red but turns out it went green so if we go green it's going red and blue is blue so all we need to do is we need to go ahead and change that in the config real quick just swap around the red and the green that we have in there so to do that we go ahead and click on esp home we edit this code right here and then right here this needs to be grb instead of rgb remember we're just swapping the green and the red so it needs to be g r b and then hit on upload and we'll just wait for that to upload real quick there we go so that uploaded and as you can see it automatically turned that light to green because that was the last saved state so if we click on stop right here go to overview you'll see it is listed as green so if we click on that and click on the red and the blue you'll see everything works correctly now so we can go ahead and set that color we still have that one led that is that is dead with one of the colors it seems if we go back to just plain white they will see there's one of them that may be a bit iffy um if you guys do see something so what happens sometimes is you're not supplying especially if you have a very long strip um, you may not be supplying enough power, especially if you're using the 5 volts. It's a long distance for 5 volts to travel, so you have voltage drop. So sometimes at the end of the strip, the colors may be a bit different than at the beginning of the strip. If you do run into that, I would recommend feeding in the power from both sides. So you go ahead and feed in power from the one end of the strip as well as the other end of the strip. So you just go ahead and connect another 5 volts to the end of the strip as well. And that should solve your issues you may have with uh, inconsistent colors over all your LEDs. But once we have that, we can also go ahead and test out the effects that we have in here. So we have the strobe, which will just go ahead and flash. The rainbow, which is probably the one that's mostly used. I know it looks a bit weird on that camera, but that's probably going to be the one that you will use most, most of the time. And then we have the scan, which just runs around and then it comes back up. Then we have a twinkle, which will just run up some random LEDs at a time. Now you see all this is because we have a digital strip and not an analog strip, which we can't control with that. With the analog strip, it just changes the amount of power it supplies to each of those rails or each of those channels. So you have your RGB. With the analog strip, it just supplies a specific amount of power to each of those uh, channels that there is to in order to change the color. Then the twinkle. And then we have random twinkle, which is exactly the same. Um, it's just... Uh, a random one and then we have fireworks which I'm not sure then we also have the addressable flicker uh, flicker I may need to go ahead and remove that um, that one's not going to work it's just a custom one in there and then we can go back to rainbow usually this is what you see when you have it behind your TV or something like that. I may go into setting up a specific uh, LED strips for your TV as well that'll do ambient light so it as the exact same color as your TV, but that's not really related to Home Assistant. There we go, guys. I think that's going to be it for today. Um, if you have any questions regarding the RGB setup, you can go ahead and comment below. Um, I do tend to try and respond to everyone. Um, I think I'm doing pretty well right now. So um, remember to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. In the next one, we may go ahead and take a look at setting up some automations. We've added everything in there, but they're still not doing anything. We just have another thing that can control everything that we have. So in the next one, we'll go ahead and take a look at setting up some automations. 
I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day.